Hey everyone, my name is Clyde and this is Clyde Plays. Now, as World of Worships players, we've all got that one friend who is always bottom tier and they complain about it constantly, possibly with some justification. And I know that I've often felt like when I go out in a division, I'm bottom tier more often than when I just play by myself. My question to myself was, is this actually true or was I just suffering from confirmation bias? And that kind of got me thinking. I decided I wanted to collect some data to find out if being in a division affected my matchmaking in a significant way. Confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, favor, and recall information in a way that confirms or supports one's prior beliefs or values. Did I just remember being up-tiered in divisions more than when I was playing solo battles? Well, let's get into the data and find out. In early January, I started collecting information on every single battle that I played in order to make sure that I had enough distribution of data across everything, all the tiers I was interested in. I collected a minimum of 25 battles at each tier from five through 10 and in each division type. That meant that I was gonna collect a minimum of 75 battles per tier for a total of 450 battles across the six tiers I was testing. At the end of the day, I ended up coming up with 538 battles with over 80 battles at each tier from five through 10. Now this data set is far from the perfectly definitive authority on all things matchmaking. And let me tell you about some of the possible issues with this data set. First of all, it's only 538 battles. Like I always say in situations like this, more data is more better. However, the numbers that came out of this study are fairly consistent, so I think we got enough information to reliably describe the behaviors demonstrated by the matchmaker. I also collected this information across both my NA and my EU accounts. One could argue that the game should have all been played just on the NA server, which is my home server, and not split across the NA and EU places, uh, and that's totally fair, like I get that, but that said, I have little reason to believe that the matchmaker behaves differently on different servers, and I've only got about 20 20 or 25 games that I played on EU in this entire data set anyway. So I didn't play all the matches on one server. Sorry. Uh, this data set also entirely ignores super ships. We have very, very few super ships in battles when they appear, and they don't appear in that many battles to begin with. Perhaps in the future, it'll be more important to include them as we continue on doing this kind of data collection. But in this set, tier 10 was the highest tier, and all super ships that appeared in any tier 10 battles were ignored. Finally, I didn't actually save a screenshot of every game's team roster which is to say that I don't have any objective quality evidence or OQE that any of this data is real. My bad. You'll just have to trust me. <laughs> Next time I do a big data collection like this, I'll capture some evidence. I mean, honestly, that's just good science right there. Throughout the rest of this video, we are going to look into whether or not playing in a division results in worse matchmaking for you and your friends than if you just went in solo. We're gonna take a look at each tier from five through 10 and take a data-driven tour on how matchmaking treats each one of those ships. We'll also talk about how fair each tier and division type is using a value that I'm calling the up tier index. I'll tell you how to calculate that value and then how to result, or uh, excuse me, interpret the resulting values. Hopefully, as we go through this process, we'll learn something that'll help us make our gaming experience more enjoyable. Two of the first values that I calculated upon completing the data collection were the average top and average bottom tiers for each battle based on my tier and division type. The idea was simple. If I'm in a tier five ship, I want the average top tier to be as close to my tier as possible, and I want the average bottom tier to be as far away from my tier as possible. First, let's take a look at the graph of average bottom tiers. In this graph, each color group represents a tier, and each bar within that color group represents one of the division types, solo for not in a division, duo for a two player division, or trio for a three player division. Now, does it really look like divisions get up tiered much more than solo players? Based on this data, not really. Generally, the three bars are more or less of equal heights, but you can see some variation. If you look at tier seven, the green bars, solos are a little bit higher than duos and trios. We see sort of a similar trend there in tier nine at the purple bars, right? Solos a little bit higher. Um, but in general, these are pretty flat. There's no significant variation when we're looking at average bottom tier, at least not based on this particular view of the data. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the average top tier. If we look at this graph, it doesn't look significantly different from the average bottom tier. Of course, the numbers are all higher that these bars represent, um, but uh, it's generally flat. I will call your attention to a couple of interesting tidbits. First of all, the tier six bars, the red bars there, they sort of stair, stair step up a little bit with the tier six solos having the lowest average top tier with tier six trios having the highest. Not quite sure if that number is largely significant of any particular trends, but it's something to keep in mind. Also, if we take a look at the tier 10 chips, because tier 10s are the top of the heap and there is no tier 11, tier 12, because remember, we're ignoring super ships, all my tier 10 battles have an average top tier of 10, regardless of division type. Very flat numbers there for tier nine, a little bit of variation at tier eight and tier seven, and then a little bit of variation there at tier five as well. But looking at this, I don't see a huge disparity between division play and solo play. If there is a difference, it's a relatively minor dis difference, at least when we look at average top tier. Now, for the clever among you, you may have observed that this video is not even anywhere near being over, so that must not be the end of the story, eh? Let's keep going and see what else we can learn. After reviewing that information, I sat back in my chair and I started to wonder out loud. If divisions don't seem to pit me against higher tier enemies, at least not in a significant way, how often do I wind up being just bottom tier anyway? I crunched the numbers for my 538 games and I came up with this graph. Now here, every color represents a type of match from my ship's perspective bottom tier, mid tier, top tier, and single tier. Single tier matches are basically matches where all of the ships are of the same tier. Immediately, the blue bars on the left-hand side of this graph stood out to me. I played 538 battles, and the most likely battle type that I would wind up in was a bottom tier battle. Was that right? What? I mean, honestly, no wonder we always felt like we were in bottom tier. We were. 35% of the time or more, we would wind up in a bottom tier match. Next up after that was top tier, mercifully, but honestly, if this was to be totally balanced and fair, we would expect to see 25% bottom tier, 25% mid tier, 25% top tier, and 25% single tier. Of course, we know that matchmaking is complicated. Wargaming has talked about this a lot. They've made interesting videos, and I'll put links to Wargaming's official video about how matchmaking works in the description. You guys should go watch that because it's complicated and really quite interesting. But I thought to myself, this can't be right. There has to be more to the story than this. As I looked at this chart, I realized that I had made a mistake. There are actually six unique types of matches, not four. Bottom tier minus two, bottom tier minus one, mid tier, top tier plus one, top tier plus two, and single tier. So I recrunched the numbers, developed a new visualization, and now my new graph looks like this. By the way, if you're looking at all these graphs and saying, hey, all these bars add up to more than 100%, mm. you're probably pretty good at math. Congratulations, gold star, and you're wrong. What? Now remember, I initially collected this data to compare matchmaking for different types of divisions. If you add up each of the bars for one type of division, that will reach 100%. All right, but take a look at this nonsense. Bottom tier minus two, in other words, being two tiers down from whoever is lucky enough to be top tier, is still the most common match type in World of Warships, regardless of the type of division that you're bringing into the battle. To this I say, what gives, Wargaming? What are we, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> Now, thankfully, the next most common battle type is single tier, which is inherently very balanced for everybody who's in it, assuming that a tier is a relatively good measure of how capable or strong a ship is. And then followed closely after that is top tier plus two. Again, good news. If you're top tier plus two, you've got a, a significant technical advantage over the other ships who are below you in tier. But the fact that bottom tier minus two is still most common really kind of sucks. Now, some of you may have figured out some of the backing data that might have driven us to this conclusion. And we are gonna dive into that. And if you haven't figured it out yet, and you wanna pause the video to see if you can sleuth out why the numbers might look like this, go ahead and do so. If you don't care to do that kind of explorative reasoning yourself, that's cool. Just keep the video playing and I will explain it to you. But first, let's switch this thing for a pie chart. <laughs> we did it. For players who play roughly an equal number of battles between tier five and tier 10, these are the percentage breakdowns. On average, in any match from tier five to 10, you will be bottom tier 36.06% .06 of the time. You'll be top tier 28.25% of the time. Think about what that means. 
I'll tell you what it means. It means that in my 538 battles, I played 42 more games where I was bottom tier than I was top tier. 42 more bottom tier games. Come on, that's a lot. But did you hear what I said though? I just gave it away. I said for players who play a roughly equal number of battles at tier five through tier 10, these are the numbers. And that is because not all tiers are created equally. Let's take a look at just my tier five battles broken out by match type. Bottom tier minus one is actually the most common battle type. Interestingly, we have zero mid tier battles and zero top tier plus two battles. And the reason for that is that we can't be mid tier because tier sixes can't face tier fours in battle. There will never be a tier four, five, six battle. And because tier fives can't face tier threes in battle, there will never be a three, four, five battle, which means that my tier five ships have to be distributed into just these four categories. My tier five battles, I should say. And as it happens, it turns out that more often than facing sevens, we have tier five and six battles, which gives us bot minus one matches. Occasionally we will get a single tier battle or a top tier plus one where we have fives over fours, but largely we're gonna fight sixes and sevens as the most common battle types in tier five. So if we come back to our pie chart and we wanna sort our tier five battles into these six options, Tier five ships and tier five battles, therefore, only go into four of these categories. And that has the result of weighting those four categories a little heavier than they really ought to be if tier five were able to match make normally against all ships two tiers down and two tiers up, like we have with the mid and upper tier ships. And things are just as complex at the tier 10 end of the spectrum. In fact, let's take a look at that graph now. Here we see that the most common battle type for tier 10 is the single tier battle. In fact, almost 60% of our battles are played just 10s v 10s, baby. After that, we've got top tier plus two and top tier plus one in that order as the most common battle types. Now remember, I said I played a relatively even number of battles at each tier and in each division type, which means that tier 10 played about the same number of battles as tier five, but it focused all of those battles in the top tier plus one, top tier plus two and single tier areas, which tends to weight that pie chart we were just looking at a little bit more towards those three categories. Remember, tier 10 can never be bottom tier, can never be mid tier, because there's nobody up above it. We're ignoring super ships for this study. And the best thing about tier 10, of course, is that at worst, you are on a level playing field in terms of com competitiveness with other ships of the same tier. And at best, you have a tier tier, a two tier advantage over those poor, unfortunate souls rolling tier eight ships into battle. So this graph basically will show us the match types. Each color group is a match type. And then each bar from left to right is a tier from tier five through tier 10. If we take a look at the bottom tier minus two matches, those are the blue bars in this, in this graphic. Uh, we see that all of the bottom tier minus two matches are focused in on tiers five, six, seven, and eight, which means those, those tiers disproportionately have to suffer with those bottom tier minus two battles because tiers nine and 10 can't take those battles. Take a look at tier 10 single tier. 60% almost of tier 10 battles are tier 10 single tier battles where they don't fight anybody but tier 10s. And that is a huge number, way more than any other tier as the matchmaker tries to pull all those tier tens out and put them in their own battle so that they don't beat up on, you know, little kids and take their lunch money. We can also see that bottom tier minus one battles are disproportionately afflicting tier five ships. Fives face sixes a lot, right? Better that than sevens. And if we take a look at tier five top tier or tier five uh, minus two battles, we see that there are at least fewer of those. That's the blue bar on the far left than we have tier five minus one battles. But those two bars are taller than any other bars for tier five. They have no mid tier option because they can't face four, five, sixes. And they have one of the, uh, and the lower bars at uh, plus one are just not that common. So we know that tier five really suffers here. And we're gonna illustrate some of this a little bit more. The key takeaway point from this graph is the fact that not all tiers are created equally. And some tiers are getting a much worse shake than others. So now that we've had that discussion, think back to that pie chart. Yeah, that's true. We had 25 point whatever percent of our battles being bottom tier minus two, but it wasn't clear when we looked at the pie chart that those were all falling on tier five, six, seven, and eight. Obviously, if you weren't thinking about it that much, you might think that those were relatively evenly distributed. That match type by likelihood chart we were just looking at, 
definitely demonstrates that the match types are not evenly distributed across the tiers. And we're gonna talk about that disparity and show more graphics that demonstrate this as we continue. Of course, we know that getting an even distribution is really challenging with the with the matchmaker. Wargaming tells us this all the time. They talk about how queue times would be too long, and I think they're probably right. Matchmaking is very complicated. But I wanna show you another graph that kind of takes the same data from the previous one, but simplifies it a little bit and allows us to really understand the disparity in what these different tiers are up against when the matchmaker tries to put us into battles against each other. Now on this chart, each bar represents a tier of ship and the colored sections within each bar represent a battle type. For this chart, we've combined top tier plus two and plus one battles into the yellow section, and we've combined bottom tier minus one and minus two battles into the blue section. You can definitely see that tier five has the absolute most bottom tier matches, and it doesn't get much better for six, seven, or eight. Tier nine, we see a sharp cutoff, and tier 10, of course, can never be bottom tier. Remember we said earlier, tier 10 only is in a fair fight or a fight where it has an advantage, so, you know, tier 10. Uh, the chosen tier. But as you can see, what's kind of interesting too is tiers six, seven, eight, and nine have a similar sized yellow region, which means they kind of tend to be top tier a reasonable number of times, a similar number of times. Obviously tier 10 has the biggest yellow region because it's always either top tier or same tier. And then tier five has the smallest top tier region. Kind of some interesting data that really shows the disproportionate uh, number of bottom tier matches that you're gonna suffer when you're not playing nines and tens. So why are bottom tier minus two matches the most common? Well, it's fairly commonly held belief that players have discovered that if they play tier tens, they'll never be bottom tier. At worst, they're the same tier as their enemies, and at best, they have a one or two tier advantage over the other players in the game. This makes the matchmaking queue top heavy with more players at high tiers than at lower tiers. Now, I didn't originate this idea, but there are some folks who have some tinfoil hat theories about how wargaming is adjusting credits and the economy to make tier tens costly to run again. There we go. Missouri was an inside jaw, man. Oh, you want some debt flags? Yeah, you can just go get them in the armory. They're two million credits. India Bravo Terra 3? That's not a signal. Oh, you know, it used to be a signal, but they took it out of the game. You can never earn them again. And that was the one that saved you 10% on post-battle credit costs. Super ships? Oh yeah, those are those boats where they suck minutes of your life away, but you earn zero credits. I would tell you guys that Research bureau ships are just free XP ships, except for they also cost millions of credits instead of one credit. Okay, Clyde, why are we talking about credits again? I thought this video was about matchmaking. Well, it is about matchmaking, um, but depending on how much you buy into the credit squeeze theory, that kind of a tactic, that adjustment to the credit economy could be used to push players from tier 10 ships down into lower tier ships in order to help balance the matchmaker. Now, that's talking about going back to a time several years ago, 2015, 2016 timeframe, where when you would play your tier 10 ship, if you didn't have premium time and a permanent camo and a good match, you could lose 30 to 50,000 credits just playing that match. Uh, the economy has not been that way in a very long time. And honestly, I don't think that I believe that the credit adjustment that is being made is about matchmaking. I think it's about general economy balancing throughout the game. Okay, back to our little match type likelihood chart here. Based on this data that we've seen so far in the video, uh, in general, the higher tier your ship, the less likely you are to be bottom tier. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, that's not fair. And that's true. Just like in real life, World of Warships matchmaking is not fair. Um, and it's important to understand what it is that fair really means. When we talk about fair, we would mean that any tier and any division type that goes into battle would have an equal number of top tier plus one and top tier plus two battles as they have bottom tier minus one and bottom tier minus two battles. This would give any given player an equal number of opportunities to have a tier advantage and to also be at a tier disadvantage. Due to the complexities of the matchmaking algorithm and uh, the number of players that are online and all of that jazz, this does not seem to be possible. And in our observed data, it is not happening. So what if we wanted a way to represent the fairness of a ship in a single value? That would make it easy to compare this tier against that tier, or maybe even this division type against that division type. To attempt 
attempt to do this, I created a formula for a value that I'm calling the up tier index, and it works like this. All right, so this portion of the video is a little bit mathematics heavy. Feel free to ignore this portion. I promise it won't be very long, but here we go. The up tier index is this formula, u equals t minus m minus m minus b, where m is my tier or the tier of my ship when I go into a battle, t is the average top tier of a match featuring a ship of tier m or featuring my ship, and b is the average bottom tier of a match featuring a ship of tier m. u, of course, is the up tier index value. For example, across all division types for tier 8, the average top tier is 8.968 and the average bottom tier is 7.253. Uh, so if we were to calculate the up tier index of a tier 8 ship, we'd go 8.968 minus 8 minus 8 minus 7.253, which comes out with an up tier index of 0 0.221. Essentially, this calculation compares how far away a tier 8 ship is from the average top tier that it has to fight and subtracts the distance those same ships are from their average bottom tier. If you're still with me, that's great. If not, don't worry about it too much. Just know this, a perfectly fair ship has an up tier index of zero. Okay, so a ship with a positive up tier index is at a disadvantage. This means that they play up tier, they play against higher tier ships more often than they play against lower tier ships. A ship with a negative up tier index is at an advantage. They play against lower tier ships more often than they play against higher tier ships. Given all of that information, this next chart might be kind of predictable. What tier do you think is going to have the best up tier index when split out by tier? Exactly, tier 10. The difference between this chart and the last one is that this chart is really taking a look at how fair this ship is. It's comparing how badly it's typically up tiered and how badly it's typically down tiered and trying to combine those two numbers into one value that's easily comparable against other ships of different tiers. The previous chart simply indicated how likely you were to get a specific match type. Using an up tier index, we can easily compare these different ship tiers against each other to find out which one has the most fair shake when it comes to getting into a battle. Now, what about divisions? Isn't that what this video was supposed to be about? I mean, yes, it was. But when I generated an up tier index chart for divisions, it actually just got more complicated and less clear. Check it out. So this chart breaks out uh, the up tier index by both division and tier. And as we can see, the chart is not flat at given tiers, which means there's probably some disparity across divisions. If we take a look at this tier six, particularly of interest is very steeply slanted upward as tier six trios have a much worse up tier index than tier six solos. Tier five solos seem to have a worse index than tier five trios, which is kind of strange. And then if we look at tier tens, tier 10 trios have a worse index than tier 10 solos or duos. Remember negative numbers are better. So the more that number is below zero, the better the matchmaking is for those tiers. So there seems to be some sort of an impact made by divisions when we look at up tier index. All that said, each of the bars on this graph only represents somewhere between 26 and 35 battles, depending on which bar it is. And in the real world, that's just not a lot of data. So I thought to myself, or actually my friend Alteran thought to me, uh, he said, well, can't we just combine them all and look at solos, duos, and trios as just a three bar chart? And at first I thought it'd be kind of complicated to do, but it actually ended up not being too bad. But did I think it was gonna show a significant difference in up tier index for different division types? Let's check it out. I was really surprised when I saw this chart. Really all we're doing here is just adding up the up tier indexes by division type. Each bar here represents a span of battles across all tiers five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, but always in the same div type, solos, duos, or trios. Remember that the up tier indexes for tiers five through eight are all positive, and the indexes for nine and 10 are both negative. They're all negative. And wouldn't you know it, this data indicates that three player divisions are almost twice as unfair as solo players or those who hit battle with a two player division. Solos and duos are as near as makes no difference 0.75 and trios are 1.3. So it's not quite twice as bad, but it's not close in any world. 
Now, the solo bar here, the blue one, represents 173 battles. The duo bar represents 176 battles, and the trio bar is 189 battles. That is enough battles to show a real trend. I gotta say, this information really surprised me. And now, even now, with knowing all of that and knowing how many battles are involved in generating this graph, I'm not 100% sure what I think it means. I mean, it means that trios get up tiered more often than solos and duos. So what do we do now? Do we change our behavior? Do we stop playing in three player divisions? I mean, no, I don't think so. There's some reason to believe, I think based on this, that there is a disparity for three player divisions over solos and two player divisions. But honestly, I think I'd like to collect some more data. Maybe we can revisit this after I've done another five or 600 battles and we can really zero in on some specific tiers and individually kind of understand uh, some, of those, uh, some of those comparative metrics, right? Up tier index and so on. Now remember, the bars here are represented for players who play roughly an even number of matches across tiers five through 10. So players who only play like seven, eight, nine, ten you'd have lower up tier indexes because the higher we go, the lower those values are and because we know five and six really have very high up tier indexes. One final note to take away from all of this is actually a piece of really old news and really old advice. And it is that not all premium ships are created equal. A lot of times we'll hear people talk about tier six premiums and how they suffer from uh, whatever the opposite of preferential matchmaking is, right? Detrimental matchmaking. Um, that is true, right? If we look at uh, matchmaking across these, we see that tier six premiums, tier five premiums, they really suffer. And if matchmaking is a concern for you, you get more for your money by buying a higher tier ship than a lower tier ship. Tier six premiums spend a lot of time fighting up. And if you're not comfortable with that, it might be wise for you to spend less of your dollars on lower tier premiums. So what do you guys think? You think there's anything to this? Do you think this matters? Is it gonna change the way that you play World of Warships? Did you learn anything here? Do you have things that you think we should look into in the future? I'd love to have your comments down below. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll choose to come and hang out with us live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Live. And until then, please take care of each other. The world could use that right now. And we will see you in our next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye. to it why do we think bottom <laughs> this is the dumbest gag i have ever done <laughs>